And everybody, I'm going to read some more of this. We're on the next part. It's called Paris. Paris. <clears throat> it's a short one, so I'll just get right through it. The carrot symbolizes financial success, a promised, often illusory reward. A carrot is a wish, a lie, a dream. In that sense, it has something in common with perfume. Something in common with perfume. Hmm. A beat, however, a beat is proletarian, immediate, and in a thoroughly unglamorous way, morbid. <laughs> what is the message a beat bears to perfumer? Hmm. That is his shtick. Elitist ways are doomed that he might profit from a more natural, earthy, straightforward approach. This beat, this ember, this miner's bloodshot eye, this apple that an owl has pierced, is it a warning or friendly advice? Those were the thoughts of Marcel Lefevre as he stood staring out of his office window on a 23rd floor. Marcel had been standing at the window for hours, even since the eclipse. Ever since the eclipse, he's been standing there for hours, just standing there looking out. <clears throat> Claude Lefevre, Marcel's cousin and lookalike, had watched the eclipse from his own office window. A practical man, Claude nevertheless had been moved. Paris is given to the dramatic at any time, yet at daylight began e ever more quickly to fade that morning and the great shadow rode out of the west. The city seemed to turn into a stage set, an eerily lit backdrop before which a drama surpassing even the talents of the French was about to unfold. As the strange twilight gathered, bands of alternating lights and shadow began to ripple along the facade of the cathedral across the street. And when Claude glanced at the sky, he saw that the text of the Les Mirables had been painted over by Salvador Dali. The sun was so round and glossy and black that it had a figure eight on it. Well, It would have validated a lot of long-standing philosophical and theological complaints undermining once and for all just whereas earthlings sit on the cosmic pool table, a silver glow like a blaze of molten escargot tongs erupted from behind the ebony coronas, and Claude felt himself trembling with a sort of euphoria. When after three awe-filled minutes, a blinding diamond crest of sun emerged from the lunar umbrella. Claude had heard others in the, in the building applauding, and he too clapped his soft, manicured hands, I'll bet discreetly. The sun was back on the job, but for some reason he did not feel like returning directly to work, so he went next door to discuss his celestial spectacle with Marcel. Marcel would understand his oddly euphoric state, if anyone might explain why an eclipse of the sun could arouse him on such a profound sense of derealization. Derealiz derealiz realization. Derealization. Marcel might. There were those who claimed that if it didn't smell, Marcel Lefevre had no interest in it, but Claude knew better. Besides, since it was, since it was Marcel's gift to dis detect odors too faint to register in others' snouts, well, who was to say, if in his cousin's world all things did not have their charisma aromas? Claude recalled a night on the beach when Marcel had stood that the sea smelled differently had stated that the sea smelled differently as full moon at the full moon than at a new moon. They were younger then, in their twenties, and if he wasn't mistaken, 
They had smoked a little hashish, so perhaps it was a joke. But if there were lunar smells, there might be solar also. What if an eclipse emitted a, emitted a particular olfactory vibration picked up by animals, say, and a few sensitive humans? That what if this signal could be analyzed, reproduced, amplified, and bottled? Talk about a heady perfume. Anyone who caught a whiff of that might come as become as giddy as he was now. Claude felt a pang in his temples, and he winced. His mind simply was not accustomed to his, this kind of high-flying fancy. Marcel was standing in his window, staring at as if he, as if transfixed. He was transfixed, staring out the window. And Claude elected for the moment not to infringe on his revere. Instead, he retreated to his own office, opened the elegantly creaky door of the Louis seventh cabinet and removed a bottle of Pernod from the exclu ex from the executive refrigerator. His secretary procured water and ice cubes. Claude splashed himself a healthy one, noticed how the Perman turned from clear to milky with the addition of water, and wondered if that was analogous or the way the eclipse had affected his thinking, or had it just the opposite effect. He gulped one drink, sipped another, and an hour nearly passed before he again called on his cousin. Marcel remained at the window. Now only he was wearing his whale mask. All afternoon Marcel stood in the window. All afternoon Claude drank. At five where the secretaries went home, Claude took what was left of the prenade and moved to the receptionist's desk, from where he might watch Marcel through the door slightly ajar. Claude would not have denied that he was spying. Rather, he had a productive interest in his cousin, for business as well as f fam familial reasons. In fact, old Luc Lefevre, Claude's father, Marcel's uncle, had a seventy, very much president of the firm personality, had, char had charged Claude with the responsibility of looking out for Marcel. He's a bedbug, Lou had said. But you see to that that he's safe and content bed bug. Claude wasn't uh, entirely sure what Marcel was buggy. He was less sure that he was content, but he would do whatever necessary to ensure his safety. For a long time now, Marcel had been criti critical of the manner in which the Lefevre company was evolving. Marcel was a perfumer. He believed in perfume. Colognes, toilet waters, and bath oils were his oh, toilet waters. <laughs> and bath oils were all right with him. They're all right with me. Since they were merely diluted perfumes, and he had not objected strongly when, that's, when the scents he had assisted creating had been used to enhance soaps, powders, body lotions, hand creams, and shampoos. He loathed the very word deodorant, however, and, and once at a board meeting tried to force fellow officer of the company to eat the aspirant, 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 jeez, that's a word, Asper, aspirant stick of Lefevre was about to market deodorant stick. <laughs> he had to be physically restrained, yet that was minor compared to his reaction to the news that Lefevre was going to supply a scent to be used in the manufacturing of toilet paper. Welcome to the aroma, aroma chemical industry, Claude had said. We are now a full-fledged fragrance house. We are a factory. Marcel had responded with, with enough, enough contempt in his voice to wither the bubbler off a bishop. And the stormed off, and he stormed off to the Lever, Levure, Levure, where he, where the smell of great art calmed him down, until he came upon of those paintings by Hieronymus Bosch, in which a little person is shoving a bouquet of flowers up another little person's rectum. <laughs> Whereupon he commenced to yell, "No used car salesman is going to wipe his ass with my perfume." 
and the museum guards threw him into the street. It wasn't long before Lefevre was supplying the fragrant compounds for cleaners, disinfectants, furniture polish, textiles, stationaries, rubber bands, shark repellent, and scratch-and-sniff kitty books. <laughs> in the day, Claude and Luke decided to introduce space sprays to re to redeodorize public buildings and subways. Marcel screamed, Muzak for the nose, and sailed for Tahiti. In a year, he was back and they welcomed him home without question. For without their bunny, they were indeed, they were indeed just a factory. It was for his sexual habits that Marcel was called bunny. Like those pious citizens who attend church every Sunday, then cheat and lie their way through the week. <laughs> Marcel visited a brothel religiously on Saturday nights when uh, seemed f to forget sex entirely for the next six days, except for a recent encounter as a perfumer's convention in America. He had never been carnally involved with a woman who was not a professional. And then sparingly, no, his nickname came from his nose. A rabbit has been calculated to possess 100 million olfactory receptors. Small wonder. His little schnoz is always twitching. Hmm. It is trapped in an undulating bazaar of ar aromatic stimuli, and Marcel, Bunny, Lefevre, was reputed with some exaggeration to be the human equivalent of Peter Cottontail. In the laboratory's Lefevre, there were spectrometers, gas liquid. Nuclear magnets signed and other instruments, rapid and precise, with which to analyze and test aromatic substances. But since the worth of a fragrance depends upon its effect on the nose, scientific instrumentation could not hope to replace the sniffing snout of a fresh as the final aperture of fragrance value. And by general agreement, Marcel's nose was the finest in the business. It could determine whether the balsam gum in the shipment from Peru had had too much rain, whether unscrupulous merchants in Madagascar had been alter adulterating the ylang, -ylang oil, <laughs> or whether there was a wobble in the synthetic geraniol. Its greatest tal talent, however, was its ability to sniff out arrangements and combinations that could result in new perfumes. It functioned as a catalytical laser, catalytic laser, oxidizing the passion that slept unaware in a violent, releasing in a violet, unaware, oxidizing the passion that slept unaware in a violet releasing the trade winds bottled up in an orange peel, identifying by name and number the butterflies dissolved in chips of sandalwood and marrying them off one by one to the wealthy sons of musk. As a manufacturer of aroma chemicals and fragrance compounds, Lefevre was among the top 20 in the world. As a maker of fine perfumes, it, it was in the top five, and it was the Marcel Bunny who kept them there the name Marcel who had been star staring out through a square foot of window, window glass for seven consecutive hours. Damn it! Sensitive artist or, not, or no sensitive artist. Pampered bedbug or no pampered bedbug. Mystical eclipse or no mystical eclipse. It was time for somebody to throw a cigar at the smoke alarm. Pardon, Bunny. I didn't intend to startle you, but I'm afraid you're starting to get tangled up in the drapes. Drapes? You mean draperies? Drape is a verb. The noun is drapery. One drapes a window when one hangs draperies. It is impossible for one to become entangled in drapes, so I assume you were referring to draperies. Oh yes, but drapes can be a convenient abbre abbreviation when one has had too much to drink. <laughs> if one cannot say draperies, perhaps one shouldn't drink. It must have been disconcerting to receive a grammar lesson through a whale mask. But awkwardly, outwardly at least, Claude took it in stride. But that as it may, he said, I have drunk 
and drunk plenty. The eclipse made me do it. Wasn't it derealizing? Didn't it give you shivers? Didn't it transport you to another plane? Didn't it make your brows brown eyes blue? Hey man, didn't it make your brown eyes blue? The whale head nodded. Is that what you were thinking about here at the window? Marcel d did not dare reveal his thoughts when interrupted were of carrots and beets. For Claude, sloshed as he was, would surely find a way to reconnect verbally those vegetables to his nickname and coin some bad joke about bunny rabbits. So Marcel said, No, I was thinking about perfume. Which, given Marcel's perceptual obsession, was a very large lie. And I was thinking about velu. Ah, examined Claude. You know, there's not much that can be done to heal the sting of a woman, as they say in her country. It's easier to scratch your ass than your heart. You misunderstood me. Let me see if I can put this in words that even the inebriated might understand. For the past month, I've spent most of my time down in the kitchen, perfecting the sense that we are calling New Wave. You are familiar with the rationale behind it, New Wave. We are predicting that for many people, the fascination with nostalgia, with a past reputed to be more simple, more honest, more natural than the present, will soon subside. In the cities, there is a large affluent professional class that has already rejected rejected the sweet, heavy, feminine, oriental sense that ha that the hippies unheard into f fav favor in the 60s, as well as the clean, wholesome, fruity, and herbal sense associated with the backpacker chick of the 70s, for this avant-garde, and for those who will flock to join it, the fever is developing new wave, a truly modern scent, sharp, hard-edged, assertive, unisexual, urban, unromantic, unmysterious, cool, light, elegant, and wholly synthetic. I know all that, Marcel. Yes, but who do you know is how boring and how ultimately frightening I am finding the scent. I slept last night with New Wave on my pillowcase, and my dreams were totalitarian nightmares. The booth is not unattractive, yet when I test it, I have... <clears throat> Somehow the feeling that I am smelling the similar vapors of fascism. Really, Bunny? <laughs> I'm not joking, Marcel removed the whole mask, the whale mask. He, his demeanor was serious indeed. I'm not joking. But surely, when I smell new wave, I have the sensation that I am smelling control, conformity, domination. As I have said, it has a definite appeal. Well, then... There's a comfort in conformity, a security in control, that is appealing. There's a thrill in domination. We are all of us secretly attracted to violence. A violent perfume? Aha! Remember that U.S. aftershave high karate? <laughs> were I to add but a trace note of leather to New Wave Claude, I would say that I had drawn on my canvas the olfactory silhouette of the Nazi. The word jolted Claude. He shuddered. He f the Lefevre twins had been small boys during the Nazi occupation of Paris, but they recall it as, a, as an adult recalls the breaking of a bone in childhood. The sickening crack, the fear, the pain, the sadness, the sudden ooze of the blood that shows itself like the black bluish of fairy tale witches. It was a wound upon their memory, a thud of monster boots in a distant sandbox. New Wave is an intriguing perfume, Marcel went on, but I am growing to loathe it and actually to fear its implications. Therefore, I have been thinking today about raw materials. The eclipse set me to be to wondering about those powerful and mysterious aspects, aspects of the natural world that the perfumer has not tapped yet. We moved into synthetics as natural raw materials became less available, more expensive. But there are spo scores, perhaps hundreds of raw materials in different parts of the world that we haven't examined. Consider the valley of the Amazon. Consider the oceans, for God's sake. And there is history. The recent love affair with the past was 
with a relatively recent past, 50 years ago, a century at the most. But what of the fragrances of a thousand years ago? Were they as primitive and unrefined as un and unfundamental unfun- as we behave? History? What about the fragrances of prehistory? Marcel took a seat. He sighed. He was not an athletic man, and he'd been on his feet the whole strange day. The eclipse also caused me to think of Velou. Yes, back to Velou, Claude grinned a sloppy Pernod grin. Let me guess. This black face of the sun reminded you of her. Reminded you that her ancestors in the jungle used fragrances of which we know little. Idiot. What I was reminded of, aside from things that are not of your business, was a remark she made. Valu pointed out to me that the synthetics that predominate the perfumery today are practically all petroleum products. The price of crude oil is not now subject to arbitrary decisions by the OPEC nations. Falu suggested that since the Arabs are untrustworthy and and since the future of the Mideast is uncertain, there is a strong possibility that the pre-petrochemicals will become even more scarce and expensive than natural materials. She suggested that we ought to be looking anew at the flowers. That is elementary and quite sound, agreed Claude. It is an idea with some merit. I don't have to be sober to recognize that. Fuck the... those guys. Anyhow, hang them from the drapes. And the draperies, too. Yes, Bunny. But that I can't imagine is how the shop girl... Out of the mouths of babes, huh? Communicated this to you. I mean, how could you even understand her? Speaking in southern Negro dialect and all. Marcel looked first at his cousin, then out the window again, focusing perhaps on that same invisible celestial footstep that had held his gaze all day. I had no problem, he said. Falou did not express this to me in English, you see. She spoke, she spoke flawless French. Mangle, wurzel, mon amour. Amour. Mangle, wurzel, mon amour. What does that mean? I don't know. Anyways, that was another uh, chapter of Bitterbug Perfume. The next part is part two, looking up Chalamala's dress. What the heck? Chomo Lung Chomo Lungmas Chomo Lungmas Looking up Chomo Lungas Look at that I don't even know what that is What the heck <laughs> So that's the next part Join me Next time See you soon